let's now talk about the AOA resistance. There are three important points for the USMLE to remember, which we will talk about. It is very important to note that AOA, like the systemic circuit, represent a branching system. It is made up of the trachea, bronchi, bronchiolus, and terminal bronchiolus. The larger AOAs represent most of the resistance. The peak resistance is in the first and second bronchi. Moving downward, the bronchioles are very low resistance AOA. The bronchiole is a very high resistant tube because it is narrow. But these tubes branch so many times and so often that as a unit, bronchioles are a very low resistant pathway. In a USMLE books, you may find a graph of resistance, which I will draw here. On one axis, we have resistance and on another, the AOAs. Again, the larger AOAs represent more resistance. The peak resistance is in the first and second bronchi. As you move downward, the resistance decreases. One bronchiole, again, is a very high resistant tube, but these tubes branch so many times and so often that as a unit, the bronchioles represent a very low resistant pathway. Because of this point, some clinical books refer the bronchioles as the silent zone. What they mean is, if a patient has early stages of peripheral AOA diseases, they do not feel any dyspnea. They breathe normally. This is because you do not feel slight increase in resistance in small AOAs because there are a lot of bronchioles and as a unit, it is a really low resistant AOA. The disease should progress to a certain point and then the patient feels dyspnea. But if a patient has a problem in his large AOAs, uh, for example, when the upper respiratory AOAs are blocked, he feels this near because you feel most of the resistance in the upper AOAs. Again, they do not feel any this near when the bronchioles has problem, but feel when the upper respiratory AOAs are blocked. This is the first point to remember about the resistance. The second important point is the effect of the lung volume on resistance. This is a cross section of the lung and this represents a small airway within the lung tissue. This airway is attached to the lung tissue. If you expand the lung system, you stretch this airway and it opens more. If it opens up, the diameter widens, which tends to decrease its resistance. This was the first mechanism. In addition, you have to know that the walls of the alveoli are physically connected to small airways. Thus, as alveoli expand, they pull open small airways and the result is decreased resistance. Again, the first mechanism of decreasing resistance is via lung expansion, which leads to opening the airways. The second mechanism has to do with the physical connection of the alveoli with small airway. When alveoli expand, this pulls open small airways with it. Thus, resistance decreases. Let's take a look at this graph showing the effect of lung volume on AOA resistance. On one axis we have resistance and on the other lung volume. We are at this point. As you expand the lung, it stretches the airways open more, which tends to decrease the overall resistance of the lung system. So, the normal curve will look something like this. In clinical practice, if a patient has a resistance problem, they tend to breathe at a large volume. By breathing in a large volumes, they minimize the resistance problem. That was the second important point. 
The third point, again, this is a cross section of the lung and this represents a small airway within the lung tissue. The airways are attached to the lung tissue and therefore during expiration they tend to keep them open and prevent them from collapsing. It is very important to note that if you have emphysema, you lose this tissue. Because these airways are no longer tethered to the tissue during expiration, during expiration they most likely narrow and collapse. Moreover, in a case of asthma, the smooth muscle tends to be constricted which also tends to collapse the airways during expiration. In a clinical practice, there is a special maneuver you teach a patient to overcome the tendency to collapse the airways during expiration. You ask a patient to expire slowly with pursed lips. Pursed lips creates a resistance point. As a consequence, you increase the pressure before that point. Pressure builds up in the airways and this prevents the airways from collapsing. Airway diameter is a function of the balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic inputs. Let's see how parasympathetic versus sympathetic stimulation affects airway resistance. A few parasympathetic nerve fibers derived from the vagus nerves penetrate the lung parenchyma. These nerves secrete acetylcholine which stimulates the M3 receptors causing bronchoconstriction. It is very important to note that direct control of the bronchioles by sympathetic nerve fibers is relatively weak because few of these fibers penetrate to the central portion of the lungs. However, the bronchial tree is very much exposed to norepinephrine and epinephrine released into the blood by sympathetic stimulation of the adrenal gland medulla. Both these hormones, especially epinephrine, stimulates the beta receptors causing bronchodilation. 